Blog Talk Radio. Do you believe that everyone has a story? Do you want to know about the passions and the stories that drive people to do the things that they do? Maybe you have a vision that intrigues you and you want a little inspiration. If you want to learn about the interesting journeys that people are taking, then you've come to the right place. Get ready to be informed and amused in all aspects of life and the crazy places it takes us. Hot Water 911 brings you Going Home with Tony. And now, here is your host. Tony Shemeca. Well, that is me, and I was talking before I was supposed to, but I'm just so excited because we're in beautiful De Pere, Wisconsin. Is that right? Or are we in Green Bay? De Pere. De Pere. And we are with uh, the famous Tom, Sharon, and Matt Lutze. Um, they're the Lutze twins. The Lutze triplets. <laughs> the Lutze triplets. <laughs> and we got a few more Lutze. About that. Yeah, we have a few more Lutzies that aren't here today. We do. So, um, uh, no, no luck for those Lutzies. <laughs> those Lutzies um, are out of luck. But we are at Wasita Farms, and although we're at the retail store in De Pere, uh, Tom, you have another location too. Where's that at? In Bailey's Harbor, Jacksonport, between the two. And uh, in beautiful in, Door County. In beautiful Door County, Wisconsin. Well, Claudia, tell us a little bit about the Lutzies. I will. Well, Wasita Farms is a certified organic farm located in Door County, Wisconsin, uh, in Bailey Harbor and here in De Pere. Wasita was started by the Lutzie family in 2008. Tom Lutzie is the chief farming officer, trained as a business and always had a green thumb. A health care in 2000 caused Tom to reevaluate how we eat and to pursue raising healthy organic beef for his own consumption. He grew the herd from six to 40 and knew that he needed a larger farm to continue his new passion. So Tom found Wasita Farms and has grown his small herd to about 100 breeding cows today, and we'll find out more about that. Sharon Lutze is the garden manager and chief image director. I like that title. She's been an avid gardener all of her life, but it wasn't until Wasita Farms. This is Sid, C-I-D. What's that? What's chief that? image director. Oh, that's oh. right. She's the Sid. 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 <laughs> He's the CFO, Chief Farming mm-hmm. Sid. All right. Matt? Well, I'm going to get to him. In oh, a second. okay. All right. She has been an avid gardener all her life, but it wasn't until Wasita Farms that she realized just how big her passion was. She has taken that passion and her expertise in pickling and canning and oversees the garden and Wasita Farm stores. And then Matt Lutze is the Wasita Farm sale marketing and communication expert. He's the eldest son of Tom and Sharon and has become invaluable in the growth of Wasita Farms. Matt has a degree in culinary arts and has worked in the restaurant industry for over 10 years. He brings his knowledge of the food industry to Wasita and handles most of the back office and administration functions of Wasita So there's Farms. no slackers at the Lutzi household. Nobody is twiddling their thumbs eating bonbons in the oh factory. Well, they used to eat ice cream. We did. What kind of ice cream were you eating? Anything in a cone, in a cup, on a stick, we made it. And that was when and for how long? Oh, there, mm. was, there was 25 years of building the company. Mm-hmm. We had about a 20% market share in the U.S. Really? Yep. Oh. We had plants in five different states, and we had 1,500 employees huh? and a lot of upset stomachs and headaches. Yeah. Okay. So Attention and stress, the organic right? uh, farming business is uh, less stressful? Uh, the, the cows don't complain. <laughs> they know, don't ask they, for raises. Yeah, they, yeah, once in a while they have uh, bad smell to them, but <laughs> short well, of that. It, it depends on, you know. If you're another cow or not. That's true. Yes. Yeah, so, so um, Tom, take us, give us a, a little, like the reason why we're eating. Where we we're should, sitting. Yeah, where we're eating and what we're eating and why we want to know what we're eating and to make sure that we don't have beef with steroids and, and chemicals that uh, actually then affect our health. How has it affected you? I don't know that I can say that it's saving me from cancer. I had it. Uh, but I do know that the food tastes good. Mm-hmm. Uh, mentally, I don't have a concern that I'm getting too much antibiotics through the food system, that I'm too, getting too many petrochemicals through the system. Uh, 
I think more importantly, I'm watching ground grow crops mm -hmm. and feed our animals. And I have this great feeling about it um, that, that I'm doing the right thing for humanity. Mm -hmm. So I think those have been the biggest rewards coming out of the, what we're doing. Um, you can read a lot of things. You have to decide what you want to believe and what you want to use as your basic food and, and what your direction is in the rest of your life. And I think that's what really came about when I had cancer and when I started reading more about our foods. And I think it it, it it's affected my life an awful lot in, in where we're going. You know, every there is such a new um, consciousness in the United States, or maybe even globally, about eating organic. And the United States is so good at producing food. And I think that the food prices have actually been so low that we waste a lot of food. Um, do you feel like in the organic uh, meat processing, growing distribution business is that we're paying more, but we're, we're getting the value for it? Are people appreciating it? I think there's a lot of people that are getting awakened to the whole business. Uh, it, it was really rewarding the first three, four years of working the store and having people come in. And it, there were so many vegetarians that came in that, really? their, that their doctors are saying, you really need to get some meat fat in your system. No, you, you need to. Uh, it, and it was explained to a number of people, it, we think this is why your health is a problem. And I think those people have come to be good friends. I mean, it was pretty rewarding that they didn't know how to cook it. Sure. They didn't know what to do with and it. And if they were vegetarian, chances are they were pretty into healthy eating. So they, if they were being told to, to resume eating meat, they probably wanted to make sure that the meat they were eating was healthy, organic, yep. without any chemicals. Matt Lutze is a chef, former chef. Former. Former. Um, you've cooked with both organic and... And uh, inorganic? No, not <laughs> organic. If it's class. inorganic, <laughs> uh, we might have a problem. Um, from a cooking uh, background, uh, do you taste a difference? I think everybody can taste the difference. I mean, yeah. it, but it, it starts with you, you, you're going to eat with your mind and your eyes and your nose long before you're ever going to put it in your mouth. Mm hmm and, and, you know, for us raising our own animals, is it's it's like you grow a garden. The tomato out of your garden tastes better than the, the, tomato, the tomato from mm -hmm. the grocery store because it's your blood, sweat, and tears in it. So for, to ask me, do I think our meat's better than other meat? Well, it's, of course it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... Well, I don't... I, I had a ribeye from you last night. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. I could do a blind, you know, a mm -hmm. double sure. blind test. Something about it, it just tastes like meat. You know? <laughs> it tastes like it's supposed to be. Yeah. And, and so is it, it's part of whether or not, because to some people, if you tell them, so here's a $20 steak and here's a $4 steak, they can't taste the difference if, mm -hmm. if they can only afford the $4, $4 steak. And that price doesn't make it better. Ground beef, to as many people, is just ground beef. It doesn't matter what the price is, so you might as well, if it doesn't matter, you should, the or, or the cost is cost is a prohibiting factor. Mm -hmm. But as food costs have continually risen, um, it, as much as I think we do our best to try to keep prices as as less fluctuating, I mean, we aren't, you know, here at the store, our prices don't fluctuate this week. They don't go up because mm -hmm. the box of meat that we bought and cut up is higher this week than it was last week. We're pretty, we're pretty our prices once a year and, and roll with it and no matter where the market is and I think the, bear, the, the margin between conventional and organics continually I think closes um, and you know I think when subsidies are, uh, aren't in play and if people have the choice of choosing mm -hmm. my meat and conventional meat at the same price point nobody will ever pick a different no. a different product they'll pick ours every time no your your beef is all grass fed or do you Put corn in there too. No, nope. no corn, no soy ever. You know, in in the beef raised at Wasita Farms, we are certified organic, 100% grass fed on, on all our. Cows. So you cannot be organic and feed corn. Nope, you can feed organic corn. To, I mean, you can feed organic corn, right? And it's still organic, but you can't be grass fed. So here's my theory. 
there's a lot of obesity in this country. That's not a theory. But is it possible that it's coming from the corn industry, that there's so much corn in our diet? Infused in, in it. Indirectly. Right. That, I mean, we're just becoming, you know, like that cow that's getting fattened up with well, cow. Uh, I don't know that it's entirely just corn to blame. I think it's, uh, you know, the goal that we had for 20, 30 years to continually produce cheaper, 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 faster, faster, faster. Mm-hmm. High fat. Mm-hmm. High fat. You know, they they they, they 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 make you feel fuller, faster, cheaper, right. and that's part of it. And and well, corn is king, and it's in no matter how many product you go to a regular grocery store and you walk around. I mean, everything from corn oh, syrup to uh, cooked in corn oil to you name it. I mean, it, it, it's in there. So I don't think you can entirely blame corn as an industry, but I think there's a lot of factors that go into it. But what happened in the last 50 years? Sometimes I saw some pictures the other day of a volunteer fire department that uh, I used to be on with in Illinois, and pictures from the 50s and 60s. These guys all weighed 115 pounds. It's just what happened in the last 50 years in our diet. I mean, I think we're probably maybe moving less than we used to maybe 50 years ago. Uh, sure but there were people 50 years ago that didn't have physical jobs. They don't. We don't walk to work anymore. No. We don't bike to work. Right. We we get in our car. We sit in traffic. Uh, so it, you think the lack computer? of movement? I I, I think so. Yeah. I think I think it's just a general the way the world is. The world's built on convenience, comfort, and everything else. It's not. It's not. You don't have. You don't have to work as hard. So you it. think it's lifestyle and the food? I think so. Yeah. For sure. But people's eating habits haven't gone down. It's what they're eating. Yeah, but but what I'm saying is is if if we are now more of a service world, mm-hmm. providing service and, and not a product, and those people were used to eating a lot, mm-hmm. and now they aren't doing that. Mm-hmm. That and I think that's what you're saying. And it's mm-hmm. been it hasn't been just in the last 50 years. It's probably been the last hundred that as we move from an agricultural right. and a producing product country. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think a lot, go ahead. Sure. I think a lot of it is also what we're eating. Yeah. You know, uh, 50 people were eating at home. They yeah. had they had supper right. around the kitchen right. table. Everybody they stopped what eating, they were doing and they ate together. And they ate together and it was cooked at home. Now they're people we're are eating, eating on the run. Out and right. they're eating on the run. And if, if I talk to people, I'm sure they would say that at least three nights out of seven mm-hmm. they're eating out more often even four or five mm-hmm. things. Have our portions gone up? For sure. You've eaten out here in northeast Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean when, when hey, 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 hey. I'm not I'm That's not throwing wrong with the fish fry. <laughs> it's fine. But it, when, you know when a when a, when a certain major international uh, Italian restaurant offers two entrees for the price of yeah. one. So you clearly have an entire second entree to and take you get home. all and you get the soup and breadsticks yeah. 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 and salad. I mean it, it's I mean, for them, I mean, I mean, the they food cost it. is nothing right? for for a couple, little uh, another sure. bowl of pasta. Nothing. But um, so it's I, portion. I think for every part of it is is that people expect to be full and, and they expect to be you know beyond full. I beyond think. full, right? And you then be given food for leftovers, right? And it's right. It's, it's just the world we you right. know the the new world order. I, I have a question about the certification of organic. So tell us about the process. Of getting Wasita Farm certified organic, is that a time-consuming process? Is it an ongoing process? How did that go? Well, I have I have voided myself from the process, and it it takes many days for our manager to go through the system and get it ready for for inspection. Every every year, is it an annual? Every thing? year, managers. Mm-hmm. Pardon? Plural. You hired managers. some more. You didn't know it. Well, <laughs> here goes the payroll. From from this store to our other store to our garden to the farm itself, mm-hmm. there's a lot of things going on, and you have to collect your your, your bag that you mm-hmm. bought your crop and your seed in. Uh, you have to provide the purchase orders. You have to provide all of the products that go into the record keeping, and and then they still look at an animal number that was. Uh, went to freezer camp and then come back and look at 
your tags in, in the freezer to see where is it. Mm -hmm. What's it say? What's the label? So it's, it's that traceable. Meat, you can trace. You can go over and find a package of meat. And we can trace it back to what animal exactly it was. Wow. Okay. Now, just so you don't grow too attached to the animals, you do refer to them with, by numbers and not names. <laughs> So there's a, there's a few names. There's a few names. And, and how did she taste? That that isn't the recognizable part. I see. Right. Because she may be that she has distinctive marks. Yeah. And she's been around for right. ten years. You know, we're uh, Matt was talking about uh, ground beef a little while ago. And I remember as a kid, I had to go to the you know butcher market, butcher. Market. It was a grocery store, and they had a butcher in the back. And I think the guy's name was Steve or Pete, you know. And he always had a good whistle. And, <laughs> and there was sawdust on yeah, the floor. Yeah, sawdust on the floor. Yeah. And she always said, "Get two pounds of ground chuck." Mm -hmm. Do people still get their hamburger that way, or I mean, what what goes into hamburger? I mean, yeah. there's always a lot of questions about that. We sell ground round, ground chuck, ground sirloin, and ground beef. No kidding. Yes. So there's. And Be, number nine. And custom grind number nine. And what's, what's that? What's in that? Uh, custom grind is Sounds a, like a, kind a, I should a be proprietary secret. Yeah. <laughs> is that what you make meatloaf out of? Uh, it well, it, 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 and... it, it includes brisket, short rib, and chuck. Oh, okay. And when you say ground chuck, it's not it's not the misnomer that I think a lot of people in society have today that it has to do with fat content. It's literally where on the animal it comes from. Mm -hmm. So it has to come from the chuck, which is the front shoulder. Brown is the back, is, is the back hip. The sirloin is in front of the round, and ground beef can be from anywhere on the end. His hamburger uh, has gotten such a bad rap over the years, and I think probably through mass production, you know, when you get your hamburgers made and frozen already, you really don't know where it's coming from, do you? No, you don't even know what animal. I mean, in the, in the, when it comes out of a major plant, you don't even know what animal it came out of, because in all likelihood, you have anywhere from two to sure. hundreds right. of animals right. in, your, in, in a pound of ground beef. Sure. Yeah. So Patty, when, when I'm looking at the display cabinet now and I see a tray full of ground beef, beautiful beef, yep. um, that's all one animal. Absolutely. How yeah. do you, how do you keep that straight? Uh, that's part of the organic certification. I have to. We have to know what. We, we don't. We don't go and throw seven. You know, seven animals worth mm -hmm. of chuck into a grinder. We're grinding beef every single day here at Wasita Farms. So uh, in the pier. So the fresh ground beef you have here was ground this morning or this afternoon. Whew. Yeah, well, our phone number is 619-924-0952. That's 619-924-0952. We have a sale on ground beef today. <laughs> it's only 49 cents a pound. Yeah, right. Say, I, that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. <laughs> ground beef is on sale tomorrow. 49 cents a pound. You come in pound. tomorrow, I'll tell you that ground beef is on sale no. again tomorrow. I think no. that's what it was when my mother sent me to the grocery yeah. store. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those things. Uh, not 49 cents. Not 49 cents? <laughs> well, you don't know how old I am. I can sell you 49 cents of ground beef. Yeah, that's true. I, another story I remember as a kid, and I was just telling Sharon earlier, I was reading my mother's diary today, and it was uh, between 1941 and 1945, so it was a lot about the war. And uh, they used to sell what was called mock chicken legs. Oh, or yeah, it was I remember that. Veal on a stick. Oh, really? So veal was cheaper than chicken. That's interesting. Yeah, so I mean, ground veal, though, is is a product that's not, I mean, no, not a lot of people it. want to buy it. Right. You know? But they'll buy the steaks and the, and the right. other parts of it. Right. But that's ground a, veal, they won't. Huh. It's just not used as much. She used huh. to make also a veal pocket. Uh, I don't know how they butchered that, but she'd make a stuffed veal pocket. Yeah. I mean, they were just, you know, my mouth's watering now. I mean, to find. I mean, do people ask you for custom cuts, or I mean, does, do people even know what to order? Some yeah. people do. Some people that either somebody, you know, we we sell more parts and pieces of it, of beef, pork, chicken than almost anything any gro any grocery store meat market in Northeast Wisconsin for sure has. Just mm -hmm. because, well, we have them, and if there's a market for tongues, hearts, mm -hmm. um, and liver, chicken feet, I I can get you chicken combs occasionally. Wow. I mean, there's, there's never I've been looking, actually. No, thank yeah. you. <laughs> it, it takes the right person, but I, I think there's there's an older demographic that is excited about what we offer here because we sell things that they can't find normally. And then there's the new demographic of young people and foodies who 
who saw somebody cook something mm-hmm. unchopped right. or whatever. Right. Like, well, I want to figure out. Right. I right. want to figure out how to do that. Or right. What to do with that? It's kind and of exotic. Inven- and they're kind adventurous. Of, right. That's kind of exotic. So, right. We are we are out of chicken comb. Chicken feet. <laughs> really? Yeah. Can't get them enough. There's not. Uh, Oh, this is serious. Much. I thought you were teasing. No, no, no. this is serious. Oh. And, and combs, we, oh. we don't collect them all. Oh, no, okay. we don't. Because it's a pretty small so, are, you a yeah. run, are you having a ready for this? Ready. Are you having a run on chicken feet? A run. <laughs> no. <laughs> Go on, sorry. There's, there's all kinds of little intricacies about it, but it's not that easy to, to do them and get them and separate them. Mm-hmm. But then you have to make sure they're okay. Yeah, if if they have too many calluses on them, you don't want to take those. Oh, I see. <laughs> I never would have well, thought of it. It's a feet thing. You know? It's a <laughs> feet fetish. Thing. And we're not going to talk about Tom when he was a non-union scab worker, so we're not going to even go there. Worker, yeah. uh, well, we did order and uh, mm. enjoy mm. uh, our Thanksgiving turkey oh, yeah. from Wasita Farms this year in Bailey's Harbor. So one of, one of the things I want to tell our listeners to remind them that there's two locations, and the one that we are most familiar with is the one we go to all the time. It's Wasita Farms in Bailey's Harbor. Where you can actually visit your dinner. Yeah. Or- <laughs> But the Wasita Farm it's Market a meet and greet. here, yeah, it's meet and it's greet. Meet and yeah. Greet. Yeah. Yeah. But the Wasita Farm Market here in Tahir is actually kind of an organic store mm-hmm. where you can buy products Beautiful. and yeah. household products and um, uh, cereals and produce. And, and the produce then is is that all grown on your farm, or do you source it out from other organic? No, we we work with uh, at least six different local growers. Okay. Um, with, well, with the produce we produce on the farm usually is sold at, at, the, farm. at the farm. We don't we, we we are primarily a protein farm and right. grass farm more than we are worried about being vegetable farm. Okay. Not to say that we disregard the garden entirely, but uh, it when it comes to the volume that we're try that we do down here, it it's mo- yeah. majority of the product stays right there on the farm. It's sold right there at the store. Got it. You also have a brother in the business, Andrew. Yes, with his business card here. Um, you know, he's not the uh, prodigal son that you are. No, he had, oh, to, he had to move away. He to move away. <laughs> he's got a company called Local Foods in Chicago at 1427 West Willow in Chicago, which I think is kind of Roscoe Village, yes. Old Town area. And what are they doing down there? He's he is doing a store similar to what ours is, but that's not his primary business. His primary business is distribution of farmers' foods in Chicago. He's going to four or five states around Chicago and bringing foods in and selling them to restaurants. That was the first start of the business. Mm. And they've opened up a store to have the access to the foods. And similar to this, uh, in the making. So, what was the average age that a that a Lusky kid would start working? Three, three and a half. I mean, at what point did you kick him out of the crib and say, "Kid, you better go out and earn a living"? Sharon. Uh, Matt, how old were you? Two and a half. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Sounds about right. Wow. I mean, Matthew this... in high school was working at restaurants. Yeah. Okay. All of our kids work. I can tell, and they still are. Well, this story are. actually even goes back further to your dad, Tom, doesn't it? Uh, that he was a farmer, and then he got yep. into the ice cream business? He did. He was a farmer, uh, as was his dad. Oh, so we're Multi-generation. four generations now. Yep. They were milk All farmers. in Green Bay? Uh, Pulaski area. Mm-hmm. So uh, Wisconsin. Yep. And uh, they eventually, my dad started bottling milk in Green Bay, and then started making some ice cream. And after a while, he had routes on the west side of Green Bay where he delivered the milk and then started delivering ice cream mm-hmm. to him. And eventually he started going to fairgrounds where he'd push a stick into a pint of ice cream, slice it up, and dip them in chocolate. That, yeah. That's so cool. You know, you talk about milk, too. We buy our milk from your store at Bailey's Harbor, Clover Farms. Yep. And... You know, you hear stories about how milk used to be where you'd, you'd have to break through that layer of fat on the top That's of the bottom. That's what we get. Mm-hmm. And it's not fat. What is it? Cream. It's cream. cream. Okay, well, cream. That's, That's why it. it tastes like ice cream. Well, man, whatever it is, it's, it's delicious. <laughs> and um, and it, just, it just seems to be so um, 
unprocessed. I also buy their yogurt. They make a European sale yogurt that Wisconsin seems to be. Um, the dairy state? Well, it is the dairy <laughs> in the happy cow state, yeah. but they really take food seriously here. Um, are you seeing this happening in your business too? I mean, people are uh, really focusing on low, no antibiotics. And I mean, is this whole every, culture every, helping? Every time you turn, there's another guy wanting to get into gardening, into raising crops and, and, and meat products. And it's growing. Where it's going to go in consolidation, does that happen? Or do they finally get smart and say, wait a minute, I don't make any money at this? Mm-hmm. Because farming doesn't make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. How can we feed the, the world? Can we feed the world organically? Today, no. Because? Well, you know, you can't wait for every person who's a, who want, thinks they want to be a farmer and have a garden, a few chickens and killing one animal a year because if one animal a year then becomes two next year and three, I mean, it'll be a hundred years before it makes, you know, it starts to make a difference. The biggest, the biggest chance of starting to meet the needs of the organic industry is getting conventional farmers to make the transition to organic. But like how many heads of cow? I mean, there's, I forgot where it's at, Ogoma or, or some dairy farmer in Northeast Wisconsin that wants to like double their operation and, um, you know, have 4,000 cows. We have many of those farms in, over in Kiwani and mm-hmm. Southern Door and here in Brown. Could you have 4,000 cows in Door organically? No. No. You can't. You have to have more land. Remember, those people are bringing feed in. Sure. The confined right. program. Mm-hmm. That, that uses that land all the mm-hmm. way around. We would have to have acreage. Oh, tons of acreage. To let the, the animals that, out right, three quarters of the year on. Right. On field, you know, unless you're grazing them for, you know, we're we're doing about 60 percent of our acre, our, our farmable acreage is hay, because this is Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. You know, if we were down in Missouri, we don't have to deal with winter, or it's a very light, gentle winter in Virginia. Mm-hmm. You know, but we're talking about anywhere from October to May is a possible winter. Mm-hmm. Nothing's happening. And 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 so you have to have. You have to spend more energy putting, you know, crop into, mm-hmm. into, in, into getting through the winter. So right. how is Walmart doing? I mean, Walmart is aren't they the largest retailer now of organic food? Costco is. Costco is. Costco is the largest organic seller. They sell more organic product than. Anybody. And are they buying it from small farmers? No, absolutely not. So how are, are they, they getting? Are they fudging uh, or? Okay, just just you know, you don't have to be in America to sell an organic. To, to oh. Sell. <laughs> USDA inspected product. Oh, okay. USDA inspected organic product. There's so much of it comes from China, hmm. uh, New Zealand, Australia, and South America, America, and they have people. They have people down there meeting the USDA guidelines mm-hmm. for certified organic in another country. Now, in theory, they should be the exact same guidelines as us. I can't prove that they're not, mm-hmm. but I can assure you, they, 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 there's there's reasons to believe. Uh-huh. I sure. think that was also part of the problem, you know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, is that there was some ambiguity in the, the technical certification, certification mm-hmm. process. And if you are getting, are they, they're not bringing, I can see them bringing in produce from like Mexico, but they're, they're just bringing beef in from China. Or they bring in produce at it's all. It's tougher because, you know, we had a really good act that's being repealed which is the Country of Origin Act. It was, the, it, was, it was the Cool Act. And and it's being repealed, but it stated you had to have country of origin of where the product came from. Yes. It was required. Uh, noted on the product. Noted right. on the product. Yes, right. And it's being repealed yes. because uh, our wonderful neighbors yes, to the right. north threatened to sue us and withhold salmon and moose from us. Uh, because, well, I don't know, whatever no. they were going <laughs> to sue us for. Um, but know, they were like going them. to... But the fact of the matter is, is that it allowed the American consumer in their mind to discriminate against their product. But as opposed to we as Americans should be entitled to know where our product comes from. Right. And, and even though the Canadians are the ones putting up a stink, the, you know, do we, are we really worried about Canadian organic beef? We're not. No. We're worried about Chinese China. organic <laughs> beef. <laughs> right. Or... Or whatever this. Are we eating Chinese organic beef in this no. country now and not know it? Not. No. 
No, Not yet. they're buying ours, though. Yep, they're buying ours. They're, they're buying, buying ours directly and serendipitously through Ooh, other countries. I like that word. We I don't know how to say it, but I like the word. I'm not sure it's the right word. Surreptitiously? Surreptitiously. Ooh, yeah, that's that's good. Surreptitially. I think that was a rib tip. Yeah, sir, rib tip. Yeah. We were in we were in Vietnam, and the, the government there knows that the bulk of the meat being sold in Vietnam is going north to the China. No huh. kidding. Yeah, it's just and coming from the U.S. So are we? Um, I mean, we're still exporting more egg. Than we're importing, but we are importing beef or not? I mean, or just from Canada? No, from, from Australia and New Australia. Zealand. Australia. Uh, you bet. Australia. Yeah, for sure. So even with the cost of transportation, they're still they could still be competitive. So, and this is, it's like this in hundreds of industries that certain American products are worth exponentially more in another market. So. Uh, hmm. Lots and lots of premium organic cuts go to go to Japan, go to somewhere else, as opposed really? to sure because if it goes can, to Japan, sure. So then why uh, so debunk Colby beef? Well, no, we, didn't, we couldn't get into that. We could be That's here a while. whole different thing. And I'll no, go, but I mean, you, you got to get the alcohol it. out to do that. <laughs> Here, here, what do we got? Quick. But, Nothing here. I need a shot. I think I think the, the, the simplest way to look at it is is Australian and New Zealand lamb. All right. We can't we in the US cannot raise lamb and sell it for less than double of what they can. Because they have more lambs mm-hmm. than people. That's number one. Mm-hmm. Land. They also have land. They that have helps? land mm-hmm. and they need that. They also sell the most wool, ah. and that becomes so they got a bigger market for the whole animal. Yeah, that that too. But uh, you know, all you have to do is go to Costco and buy an inexpensive lamb, and they're bringing tons of it all the time. And that's probably where it's coming from. Yeah. Well, it is where it's mm-hmm. coming for sure. Is the taste of lamb changed? Where are you buying it from? So you could. It depends on what it's what it's being fed. Also, mm-hmm. we have a friend from a long time ago when. We still at the ice cream company. He also had a dairy farm. Well, he took a lot of the waste from the milk production and he fed it to his veal. Oh, interesting. Or his, his lamb. Right. And he so, was putting, giving milk to his veal. Uh-huh. milk. Wow. Milk. Cow's milk. It was delicious. So it was milk-fed veal. It really was. What yeah. For yes. me, he used to always advertise milk-fed veal. Wow. And that's what he got okay. and we would get meal from him. I am so, we it should have eaten best. dinner before. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got in the back? Chicken right now? So I smell something cooking. Chicken. You know, this is not fair. I mean, this is like a guy who just got out of jail, you know, mm-hmm. doing the Victoria's Secret um, <laughs> lingerie fashion show or something. I am so hungry talking about food. Well, we're at Wasita Farms. We're with Sharon, Tom, and Matt Lutze. We're also talking about Brother Andrew. His ears are probably burning. Um, and our, we can find, and they can, our listeners can find information about Wasita Farms by going to wasitafarms.com. Yes. Um, what about, uh, you were talking about chickens earlier. You guys aren't raising chickens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You are raising chickens. What do you think we eat? Well, well like that uh, magically, that's what we You didn't raise turkeys. You bought, you, you sourced those. We did one year. So we did. Yeah, we did tried it. Yeah. yeah. We, we, that isn't a good idea. Not doing that no. again. No. <laughs> that's a good idea. Scratch that one off. Tell <laughs> oh, that little turkey story. That Tell a turkey told. story. Which turkey story? About people asking for different sizes of turkey. Well, it's <laughs> really interesting. Everybody really knows what size turkey they want. They want for rice. And the first year we raised turkeys, we our turkey sizes range from six pounds to twenty six pounds. Okay. The ones we grew. The ones okay. we grew. Okay. So well, that doesn't work for everybody. The world we live in today is very specific. So how many yeah. six-pound turkeys didn't sell? Actually, it turns out we can sell a lot of 12 and under turkeys now. Oh, oh really? yeah. They're actually, they were the biggest group of tur- requested turkeys. Oh, really? Not year. the 22-pound drum? No, but no, absolutely not. Huh? Most people don't have any idea how to how to deal with a 22-pound. Mm-hmm. We did get a request for a 45-pound turkey this year. <laughs> <laughs> we were not able to honor that request. <laughs> we're not sure. We, but we did sell them, too. We, no, we are, they, they actually, them they actually <laughs> bought, <laughs> then they bought five 20-pound turkeys. <laughs> oh, 
the math doesn't work out, yeah. but it worked out in our favor, so we're okay with it. Boy, how many ovens did they buy? Um, who knows? It was, but I think there's there's the we sold a lot. I mean, actually, if pe- we had people ask for six pound turkeys, we had people. I'm like, that's that's a pretty young turkey. Yeah, <laughs> and, that's and a so we learned that. Like it's it's chicken. a bigger challenge to go and, and and just wait to see when the turkeys just show up and then you have to pray you got close the to the right, right number right is, is a big challenge. So, so as a chef, what was your favorite way to prepare turkey? Wow. Most chefs. Yeah. When's the last time you went out to a restaurant yeah. and had turkey? Hmm. Exactly. It's it's <laughs> not. You don't see it very often. I'm still thinking. Yeah. Ask that um, question a different way. How yeah. does he? Cook How his, how'd you cook your turkey this Thanksgiving? Not the way I like it. I always, I, you know, I sabotage it. It's boiled. Oh, well, no, no, it's not. Turkey. It is no, boiled. No, it's not boiled. Boil. Right, it's tell in a Nesco. Tell I cook it in a Nesco. It's steamed. No, mm-hmm. it's just a Nesco. So the, well, then Matthew should tell you how he would cook his okay. turkey. Well, deep okay. fried? We, we deep fried one this year and we smoked one this year. Oh. Uh, but based on, That's this year was a little more challenging. Uh, usually I prepare turducken from scratch turducken mm-hmm. so okay. which is a which is a duck, duck inside of a chicken turkey. inside of a turkey yeah. did wow. you know that what's your core temperature on that uh well it's 170? about 155 oh no kidding okay. and what do you because you want medium red duck breast oh okay nobody uh, want nobody wants over over duck mm-hmm. that's the trick and you just roast it in the oven uh well the most recent time i put it in my smoker and it goes for it, it cooks at about 190 degrees for depending on the size, how big it is, but it's solid 12 to 16 wow. hours. And you've also deep fried turkey. I we deep fried it one this year. How'd that come out? It turned out great. Yeah. They were brined in advance for 24 hours and they were good and juicy. We'll and be going to the Lucky's next year. Yeah. What time do you start <laughs> serving? Um, I always like a golden brown turkey. You know, and my I don't give them that. And uh, the ours uh, are tender though they fall. They are very the tender. Stone. They're infused they, with they, a lot of moisture. Mm. Uh, well, there was an ours. additional challenge this year okay. because we had Thanksgiving, and the plan was a tailgate Thanksgiving because oh, the packers, the packers that and bears. Right, yes. yeah. Now, Mother Nature didn't exactly Which we were cooperate. About no, the, uh, the, no, rain the rain or the rain. scores again. <laughs> so we did have a tailgate, but we had it in a garage okay. outside, but in a garage. So we could stay dry for at least three hours before the game. Sure. But it was a new Thanksgiving challenge. That was a new experience for your Thanksgiving. It was. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Wow. But uh, the the group liked it. They loved Matt's turkey and, and ate it quite well. And uh, we do have a group picture of everybody that was at was at the uh, Thanksgiving. Oh my oh, God! Oh, oh look children. at the hat. Oh, for all you people that don't have televisions, everybody's dressed as pilgrims. Except for it's, one turkey. Yes, except for one turkey. Oh, that's cute. That's and, awesome. and note that Where did you get all the costumes? The yeah. internet. Oh, well, I'm going to love Thanks. that. Uh-huh. And you notice the uh, the uh, hats the pilgrim men were wearing? Were cheese heads. Oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, love awesome. we love Wisconsin. We love Wisconsin. Where were we the other day? What was that? Uh, Renard's? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, something about the, uh, and it sounds awfully repetitive, but. You don't leave there with just one piece, one block yeah. of cheese. Um, food is sacred in Wisconsin. Wouldn't you think so, Sharon? I do. I think people in Wisconsin like to eat, but they like to eat a lot of different kinds mm-hmm. of food. And I think they eat a lot of food that, um, that they were raised on. Yeah. So right. we have German people, we right. have Irish people, we have a lot of nationalities here. So a lot of tradition. A lot of tradition in the food. Were you raised um, with those kind of traditional dishes? Um, I think I was raised on whatever my mother could get on the table for six kids. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So she was uh-huh. a <laughs> And nobody complained. She was, she was somewhat challenged, I think, just by the number of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and at a time when... You know they didn't have a lot of money, so mm-hmm. it was a challenge to just feed six people. And but they also had a garden, so mm-hmm. my mother and father knew everything, and my mother canned everything. So I grew up eating food healthy, wholesome. Healthy. Mm-hmm. And my parents would buy a half a cow because that was the cheapest way for them to be able to put meat on the table. For sure. Us. Wow. So um, that's how I grew up eating. You know, it's funny we have progressed so much in the last 50 years, but you have to ask yourself, uh, what is your definition of progress? Because we have um, 
definitely been able to feed more people cheaper than we ever have been. Mm -hmm. But what is the quality of the food and what is the quality of the meal and what is the, you know, the and preparation think, of the I family? Think we're, I think, maybe I'm being optimistic, but I actually think we're making a loop Circle. back mm -hmm, yeah. to eating around the table again and, and, and putting some effort into a meal and cooking it and maybe sharing recipes with children and, and grandchildren. So I think we went that whole other route where we were eating on the run, like you were mentioning before, and I think plenty of people still do that. But I think we're starting, and I think that's why a store like What's the Farms Market is going to be or is so successful because I think that the consumer realizes the value of the food that we put in our table. There's a very glib saying that says, pay now or pay later. Mm -hmm. Pay now for maybe a little mm -hmm. bit higher price organic food or pay your doctor later. And you can speak to that. And so I think that people are starting to understand the value of eating well, eating healthy, and, and putting some effort into it. I think they're also starting to, to take on a mindset of investing in yourself, yes. in your body, which right. is what you're saying. Right. And by eating organically, eating food that's chemical free and hormone free, you are investing right. in your body. Right. And so the mindset has to start to come around like, I'm going to pay a little more money for mm -hmm. my food now, right. but on the tail end, I'm going to be a healthier Stay person. Healthy. And I think that I see in Matthew's generation many more people who mm -hmm. are taking that to taking heart. Taking the effort. Mm -hmm. And I think they, they like their children to know where their food comes from. I think that's where they come to the farm. Right. The fact that we have people walking around the farm, they get to see the chickens, the cows, the pigs, right. the garden. Right. I mean, oftentimes we have people come in the garden and I pick beans for them to eat. They've never seen a bean growing out of plant. Right. Right. They had no idea they that had no idea this is where they came from. Exactly. And I think Excuse people. Me. Sir, you dropped the glow. Well, uh, go ahead, Sharon. I'm sorry. I think they want their children to understand where their food comes from. Right. And we provide that for them when they come to the farm. Right. That's mm -hmm. the real a knowledge of a real right. farm and seeing where their right. food is coming from. Right. And I think people are paying attention when they go to even a a traditional grocery store. I think people are reading labels more than they ever have before and being are, are making themselves more aware of what they're putting on their table. Well, uh, one of the um, trips I took a couple, probably a month ago now, I was down in uh, the north end of Haiti. Uh, Claudia's brother is a physician and goes on a mission trip every year. So uh, I, I went with him and it's incredible to see people um, eat one meal a day and they, they knew that that was the only meal that they were going to get and there was no obesity and we just seemed to and they prep the food the women all, are prepping all, all day. day long mm -hmm. and and it is from their garden and to have a little bit of meat is really you know an exception it's not the norm that we have become so um spoiled mm -hmm. you know that you know we don't know what it was like back in the 20s 30s and 40s we weren't around and, um, you know, so, you know, I think I agree with you, Claudia. One of the other things that I think is also changing in the United States, and we could thank um, uh, Uncle Starbucks for, is we've reinvented how we eat breakfast. Now, you know, breakfast used to be a pretty big meal, you know, if you went out for it. Uh, but I think people are starting to eat lighter breakfast now, and uh, they're eating more toward the afternoon. Sharon, do you see that as a as a shift, or like when when you were growing up, was was breakfast the big meal, or was it normally supper? Supper was the big meal. Yeah. It was the meat and potatoes and vegetable meal mm -hmm. that we all sat down for to. Um, breakfast was generally whenever you got up because we had cereal or oatmeal. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. it. There Take weren't any other options. <laughs> Boy, did you, ever see, did you ever see the cereal? You don't have a cereal aisle here, do you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. we have Do you see a cereal aisle? Really? Sure. But like, Good stuff. Like, you know, Frosted Flakes cereal? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we're all out. Uh, a lot of granola. A lot of granola. Yeah, that's I'm right. not sure every morning. Cheerio. No kidding. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I have every morning, here's my breakfast. I make a latte with the, your clover milk and then the um, kind of like a handmade concoction of different nuts and seeds and oats. Mm -hmm. With uh, your clover yogurt on yeah. top of that, uh, two years. You put two, it in a blender? No, no, no. 
he put it right on top. crunches his way through that honey. every I morning. I'm bringing me some, uh, some samples Oh, there you here. go. What do we got? Power oats. Power oats. Like Cheerios. Power oats. They're not Cheerios. They're, they're like, power oats. Right. Wow. All right. I'm going to try these tonight. Although I have, I noticed that Cheerios is advertising. All Cheerios are now gluten-free. Oh, really? It's an advertisement on TV. I think that's amazing. Is that a big deal, Matt? But they were oats. The, that's the what, gluten-free they, craze? Oh, gluten-free. Oh, Absolutely, wait, it is. Well, gluten is what, not an oat, what do you I mean? It's a big thing because it's affecting... I know, but is it affecting our health to get rid of gluten? Is it a good thing? Uh, does it reduce inflammation? I think to people who have celiac, it does. But, did, I mean, did celiac and fibromyalgia kind of get, like, are there less people that have it that think they have it? Yeah. So... The advent of the increase of celiac disease is maybe over exaggerated. Remember, we all didn't want carbs five years ago. Right. I'm sorry? We didn't five want years ago, carbs. we didn't want carbs. We were right. low carb Well, everything. now we switch carbs to gluten. Right. Now, it's if we take the gluten now. And I'm not saying it's right, wrong, or different, because there's plenty of people that have the allergies. Have some and you want to know what? If you think you're healthier because you're eating a gluten free diet, well, more power to you. I can't. It's great. You want to know what? The most important thing is, is that all of our meat is gluten free. So I'm not going to fight the gluten, the gluten free people. Mm-hmm. All of our sausage is gluten free. I mean, and so from that standpoint, if you're most comfortable, that makes you feel better. It's just like me, us believing that our meat is better because we know how it's raised, well, or we know it. or why the cus- our customers come in. They know they know where this meat came from. They trust where this right. meat came from, Makes and that improves what improves sure. the mental image of how they're of what they're eating sure. in advance. They're not, they, so I think that makes a huge difference. It's your mindset going into it. For years, doctors have encouraged you to have a positive feeling about what you're going through, that your health will be better after you do something. Sure. The power of positive thinking is a big part of it, and and if you like certain things. If you feel good about certain things and right. and they happen to be good for you, no question about it. It's a win-win. You can will yourself healthy, but you can also will yourself sick. Sure. You you know just because just because you're supposed to have white wine with fish, if you hate white wine, <laughs> right. then have a peanut and water, have right. a red wine, because it, nothing going to ruin your meal more than doing what you're supposed having the thing right. you're supposed to have. Or if you really want to have Chardonnay with your steak, well, if that's gonna if that's what you want. And that makes you feel better and you enjoy your steak more, well, then don't don't let other people tell you that. I mean, right. Even though there's more antioxidants in the rim. Well, that's true. <laughs> Absolutely. Two and a half uh, years ago, I put a moratorium on flour and sugar, which was a real hard one for me because you were a bread you know, guy. ice cream and bread yeah. and pastas were about the three food groups I needed. And so I switched to more protein, <laughs> and uh, so immediately I might have lost 20 or 30 pounds 30. without even thinking about it. Uh, but I feel much better, and I feel that um, the uh, over uh, consumption of anything is not good. Absolutely. So I have cut down. I haven't cut down on my portions as much as I should, although. When last two nights ago we we uh, barbecued up a couple of your ribeye steaks, and um, they're just sitting on that platter, beautifully medium calling rare, me. calling me. <laughs> and I said, tell you what, before we cut into both of them, let's just cut into one, and then we see how we'll do, and we'll then have the other one and we'll have the other one tomorrow night. And then, so one of the things that we, Claudia and I, are doing is we are just starting to um, eat slower. You know, there's that thing where your stomach doesn't tell your brain for like 10 minutes that you're full, that you're full already. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're, you know, nobody's going to take the food away from us. It's on the table. <laughs> so, I mean, there's this, this whole mindset that's going along with this. Well, this has been a delightful afternoon. Um, I'm so hungry. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to start eating this we will organic be shopping cereal. Before we leave. Right on. I don't care if it's fit. Steak. Well, we've been with uh, Sharon, Tom and Matt Lutze at Lucida Farms and the Pier, Wisconsin, and you can also visit them in Bailey's Harbor. What's the address in Bailey's Harbor? 7281 Loggerquist Road. All right, so give us the main uh, crossroads. Well, we're on the west side of Kangaroo Lake, crossing the rushes. Okay. Between and, Jackson Ford and Bailey's Harbor. Mm-hmm. So GPS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and how do we get to your uh, store in De Pier? What's the address here? We're at downtown West De Pier uh, at 330 Reed Street, next to Gallagher's Pizza. Mm-hmm. And we're not too far from Lambeau Field. 
Uh, it's a long walk. It's a long walk, <laughs> but you will cater. Uh, uh, people will come here for their tailgate. We do. Time. We our 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 local and organic focus grocery store in Delhi. Do, the deli's open every single day. The store's mm-hmm. open from nine to seven every day. And that's in Lambo. Uh, no, no, here. Oh, here. Here, okay. here right here. What are you going to have the, a new store in Lambo? <laughs> they have to get uh, they have to get their construction project going for us to consider. Okay. Well, that would be a good also idea. Also, they have a Santa. Tell us about Santa on Saturday. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we're having Sloppy oh, Joe's no, no. and Santa. I'm sorry, Saturday. Saturday. We're having Sloppy Joe's and Santa from 11 to 2. Mm-hmm. So, uh, is Santa eating with Sloppy Joe? Uh, I or? think uh, afterwards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Afterwards, <laughs> if we have Sloppy Joe. Worse than Santa with Sloppy Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not as white beard. Not so good. Okay. Right, and, you well. can, and our listeners can go to wasitafarms.com to find out more about Wasita Farms, and uh, we can guarantee you will love yes. their product. We're also yeah. on Facebook. Yes, Instagram. Facebook. And are you on Twitter? Twitter. Twitter. Pinterest. Uh, no, I don't know what that means. I don't. That's fine. Okay, good. Then, yeah, as far as you're concerned, yes. we're here. But we're for, the, for, for your listeners, we're probably not there. Okay. Okay. Tell me, Chloe, I have one question. Yes. Do you, do you tell people how you find the people that you have on your show? No. You don't? But no. maybe we should. I think we should. I was drinking one day, and Sharon was passed out on the bar, <laughs> and I said, hey, lady, you want to be on the radio? Not true. Okay. <laughs> was that? <laughs> but uh, we'll take that uh, under advisement, and Claudia, yes, our executive producer, will um, have a show. On well, we met Sharon at their other store. Their That's other how store. we were shopping right. there, and we started well, you talking. you happened upon us. Yes. yes. And we started uh, talking. I yes. think and the word said, is forced upon you. And you yeah. said, you guys have a great story. You have a great Claudia. story. <laughs> I said, you should be on our show, and, and to do here we point. are. Yeah. I'm there. <laughs> here we are. Okay. Well, so thank you very thank much. You very much been wonderful. Thank you very much, Have a coming. great thank Christmas. Happy New Year. And go Packers. Go Pack Go. <laughs> yeah. okay.